If you're in the process of trying to decide when to retire, when to pull that trigger, I want to share with you three most important things that you really need to consider that will make a difference in your decision process. So grab your retirement journal so that we can jot down some notes to help you in making your decision. We have three important resources in our lives. It's time, health, and money. And when we're young, we have plenty of time. We don't have a lot of money, but we have good health. So we're willing to use these resources more and more. Yet, as you can imagine, and you probably can feel it for yourself, is when you progress through your life journey, those perspectives do change. Maybe our health deteriorates, we don't have as much time, but we may have more money. So different things are becoming important to us. And that's what I want to kind of dive in a little bit deeper to help you with your plans today. But the first resource that we're going to look at is time. And I really want to give you kind of like an eye-opening perspective. So let's assume that an average uh, span of life is 90 years. And maybe you are at the age of 60 right now, which means that we roughly have 30 years to work with. So let's say if you are an avid reader like myself and you read about five books a year or so, we're just kind of doing some averages here. That means that in the next 30 years for the remainder of your life, times five books, you only have 150 books that you're going to read. Next up, if you only see some of your friends once a year, that means you're only going to see your friends 30 more times before your time is up. If you're talking about your family and if you're talking about your kids and your grandkids and you only see them maybe four times a year because they are spread and live in different parts of the country, then you're only going to see them for another 120 times. So by giving you these examples, what I want you to realize is that when you look at it from a really kind of like you know, space level and you're looking at it and then you dive deeper down and you look at your life under the microscope, you realize that your time is truly is a finite figure at some point. And this is where I want you to really think about it and jot some of your thoughts down and ask yourselves, is it working more and spending more time with your coworkers is going to be more important than spending your time with your family, your friends, your the things and hobbies that are important to you. Next up is your health. And you know what? Most of the time, the future is unknown. A, a good example that I can give you is a client of mine that recently retired. They both worked so hard and they thought that they planned so well because they wanted to retire at the age of 65. And here's what happened. They retired, they celebrated, they started doing all the things that they wanted to do. And you know what? Four months later, the husband passed away suddenly and it was completely unexpected. It was a shock to the wife and here she is now. So my suggestion to you is thinking about your health and ask yourself those hard questions is, what is my health right now? You know yourself better and where is it going to be in your opinion in the next five to 10 years? So if your health is not so good, and you know it, and that is the reality check for you, that perhaps you should retire sooner than later. If your health is, and you are in good shape, then maybe you need to jot down some more thoughts in your notebook and do like a pros and cons, you know, your pluses and minuses, and see which column has bigger list and see what makes sense to you, but it's definitely not something to be taken lightly. One other thought to consider when it comes down to your health is just to remember that your healthiest years are going to be in the beginning of your golden years. I kind of like the first half, half of it because in most of us, most, in most cases, the health is going to deteriorate, which means that you're going to put in more financial resources and more time in taking care of your health and working on that. The next factor to consider is money. So this is where a lot of people are having a hard time because they really need to have a mindset shift. You are so used to kind of working and working and then saving and putting that money away for some day, for that future, for when that retirement comes. Yet when that retirement is coming and it's here, you now get to the benefit of drawing those funds and using them. And this is sometimes is so hard to understand because it really is, it's kind of like flipping a switch from on and off, and now you are getting to use those funds. And then this is where you actually get to celebrate and benefit because you work so hard and those funds are waiting for you. But that also means that you need to do a little bit more planning and have that foundation set so that way you know what your expenses are and how you can stretch those funds 
for as long as possible because that is one of the other questions that a lot of people have concerns about to make sure that they have enough money to last them through their golden years. My second suggestion is working with a good financial planner to help you and move your assets from more robust investment options to something that is uh, less risky. Some of the good options that I have heard are high yield savings accounts, uh, US treasury bonds, and other resources. At the same time, don't knock off the idea of having a part-time job. It is something that you can have and enjoy it and for it to be fun. If you love to read and you love books, go work in the bookstore. If you love coffee, Go work in the coffee shop a couple of days a week. This way you have the interaction, you have the income going, you have the schedule. In the same time, it covers a bunch of those little things and it's still contributing to your overall budget. I have a great story to tell you for a client of mine. Uh, he always dreamt of being close to Disney World when he retired. So they did, his wife and him retired, and they ended up going into a nice 55 plus community and they retired in Orlando. So what did he do right after? He went and applied and got a job at Disney World. And he worked there for quite a number of years. He only did it part-time, so he worked when he could and just did it a couple days a week. Yet he was so full of life and energy knowing that he worked in the place that he truly loved. So he worked in, I think Epcot, and he had the uniform, you know, the white shorts and the red top at that time. And he did different job every time he went in because he was their backup, just in case if somebody got sick, or somebody couldn't work. So he came in and he found out that day what kind of job he was going to do. And he enjoyed it so much and worked for the number of years that he was there that he was actually able to accumulate for a retirement plan from Disney based on the qualifications back then. So I thought that was a really cool story because he truly enjoyed it and he made his, uh, his dreams a reality and of course contributed to his uh, budgeting because he did work. So this is where I want to caution you. When you have your budget and you have that foundation, don't think and have those arbitrary goals. The arbitrary goals are something that you have kind of like floating in the clouds and say, you know what, when I turn X number of years, whether it's 60 or 65, I'm going to retire. Or when I save up so much money, this is when such and such a thing is going to happen. It's just too broad and it's too unknown. And I think it's just too prone for you to have more anxiety. And that's never a good thing, especially when it comes to your retirement. So my suggestion to you is know exactly what your numbers are. Where are your expenses right now? And those are not necessarily going to be the expenses that you have in retirement, but at least you have a good base and the foundation to build on to make a decision on what percentage that you're going to need when you do retire. Uh, so some of the numbers that I've seen is like 75 to 80%. So have that base and I'm going to link a few of the good calculators that I have seen my clients use in um, in the box under this video for you to use as well. And the bonus suggestion that I have for you is trust your gut, your instinct and your heart. When you're thinking about something, the first thought usually is what makes sense the most to you on the emotional level. And usually instincts are pretty accurate for us. So trust those because then what's gonna happen is your brain is going to kick in, you're going to start to think about it, analyze it, and then you're gonna go down that rabbit hole and then you're going to talk yourself out of it or change your mind or do something else. So don't forget the instinct is there for you to help you in your decision-making process. So which of these suggestions make sense to you today? I hope that you found them useful. Please share with them those, or if you have something else that is benefiting you in your decision making so others can also be helped so that way we can all celebrate together in helping you prep for your retirement.